Henrika 911, what is the address of your emergency? And sir, do you need police, fire, or rescue? All right, ma'am, I'll get help on the way to you. And what's going on? Are they kind of breathing? Are they awake? I love what I do. Um, I love the camaraderie um, in this center, and I just like the fact of, that I'm able to help people and be that calm voice on the, side, on the other side of the phone. Henrico 911, what's the address of your emergency? You don't know what type of call you're going to get, and you don't know how you know how you're going to react to it. So it just takes the it makes the job thrilling. You know, if you're looking for excitement, you got it when you come here. Does it seem like she's under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? It's stressful, yeah. Every day, you know, our job here is your, your regular job. You wake up, you know, during your shift, and this is what you do. And, but what's hard to realize is when people call here, it's their worst day. You know, this is it's not a good day for them. So for us, it's a regular day. It's a regular Tuesday. Units 375 and 261, the subject abruptly changed lanes, drove down the shoulder, and took the Huguenot exit. Henrico County is always looking to hire good communications officers. Uh, the, the position starts out at a little over 37000 a year. Uh, we offer full benefit package on um, paid leave, sick leave, vacation leave. Our folks are not credit-seeking people. They don't ask for a lot for the, the service they do. They're very humble and they are the hidden heroes. They handle calls at a pace that most people would find very hard to keep up with and they handle tragedy potentially on a day-to-day -day basis and they hang up one call and they go to the next. I like how in our jurisdiction, because many jurisdictions are set up differently, in our jurisdiction we take the 911 calls, we take non-emergency calls, we dispatch for police, for fire and EMS, all in the same room, all the same people. So we all can switch positions, work fire radios, police radios, take the calls. If I were to take a 911 call and it was something that required both police and fire and EMS, for example, an accident with injuries, I could put it in and while I'm still obtaining information, it's already being dispatched, and I can simply stand up and say to the radio operator, there's entrapment or they're going to be on the other side of the exit. I can just speak to my coworkers. We are all looking at the same computer screens. We are all kind of acting as one. I think it gets people help very quickly. It's good service. So it's, I live in Henrico also, so it makes me comfortable to know that if I needed help, that that's the kind of response I would be getting, that that's how my request was being handled. This is Henrico Police. We do have a, a pretty, pretty large call volume. Uh, 911 calls, we handled over 178,000 last year. Uh, well, I knew I'd be answering all kinds of phone calls. Um, I just didn't know the radio structure and, and how busy a police radio could be. Same thing with the fire, we just had a working fire, so you're listening to multiple TAC channels, trying to multitask, you got someone asking you to make this phone call and that phone call. Just all the ins and outs of everything behind the scenes that nobody thinks about when they call and they just need the fire department or a police officer to come out. One that I remember, she wasn't necessarily a young kid, I believe she was a teenager, but the call just came in with her screaming, and apparently she had just witnessed her mom collapse. But it was trying to get her attention focused on me to try to get, first even to know that the mother wasn't breathing, and then trying to get CPR started. So I think the people who end up not being able to stay at this job are the ones that they they can't get past that screaming. That's just my thought. I mean, that's certainly, I, I still hear her screaming, but it's not something that I think about all the time. And it, you know, I can tell the story, and it was very sad, and I could feel her, her pain, but can continue to answer the next phone call. The worst day is, it was actually my birthday, um, and I had three back-to-back -back calls that were pretty um, severe. Um, and those types of days you think, man, why did I get into this? Um, but then you take your next call or you see the outcome of a call for service and then you think that's exactly why I'm here. Um, making a difference, helping people. Um, it's kind of the cliche of I want to be in this business to help people, which that's exactly what we're doing is providing that customer service to those people who are calling in um, and it's the worst day of their life. So we want to make sure that they get the help that they need.
When I applied, I probably had an idea of the, just the frantic calls, the emergencies, the people yelling. I didn't really have a good idea of the up and down of it. So you could take a very serious call. Um, someone's loved one has passed away, a baby's not breathing, there's a suicidal person. You could take this very serious, very bad call and then handle it, and then your very next call could be something much lower priority, like an animal call. And you have to treat each person as if it's just as important to them, no matter what you encounter in your day. It's a great job and it, it really offers, offers you the chance to really make a difference in somebody's life. But having said that, working in the public safety and field of work, it does come with great sacrifice. And a lot of that comes with uh, working nights, weekends, holidays, shifts, shift work, which means you could spend a lot of time at work and a little time around family and friends. Uh, it's a 24-hour operation and we work three different shifts, so that, that is a complexity that sometimes does require a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of adrenaline, it's a lot of anxiety. We do a lot of, you know, up and down, up and down. You know, we could be, you know, we hate to use the word quiet, but it can be quiet in here for a little while and then all of a sudden we have major incidents that break out and then our intensity levels go up and down so constantly throughout the day that it tires us. You know, you really have to have something that you do that you enjoy outside of work. Ken Rank and I would want to address your emergency. Two years ago I spent almost 80 something minutes with a young female who had a mental um, disease, thought that somebody was after her, and by the time I was done with the 80 minutes, I managed to get her out of the house with the officers, and she was transported and got the help that she needed. It was just by having a conversation with somebody that was a female that was very close to my age. They just wanted somebody to talk to in the end. You just, you just gotta find the balance of, do you turn yourself into them a little bit and understand them, and then realize that, you know, that could be your family member or somebody that you truly love. What would you do in the same thing? It's worth it because in the end, you know, when that person got the ambulance that they needed and made it to the hospital on time, or if that police officer got there and he de-escalated the situation and no one went to jail, or um, in an accident, you hope that, you know, sure the vehicle may be damaged, but, you know, everybody is okay. It's things like that that makes this job worthwhile. Okay, we can send an officer out there um, since he gets Right now, being five years in, you don't really notice or remember every single story. You do your job, you do one call, and then you go to a next call, and they're totally completely different calls, but it doesn't stick with you. And then I also had one where um, the husband called in and said that his wife was in labor, and I had to give him all the instructions that we usually give. Okay, so the baby's being born. Sir? Okay, the baby is crying. Yeah. Okay, just keep the head slightly down so, al so you allow the fluids to drain out the mouth, okay? Just try to dry the baby off, okay, including the head. But do not allow, do not allow the cord to crimp, okay? Do not mess with the cord. Keep it loose. Don't allow the cord to sweat. Don't allow the cord to sweat. All right, we have them in route, okay? I'm going to stay on the phone with you. Ma'am, you doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Did you have a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl? Oh, congratulations. Thank you. What I'd like for, for those to know that are applying for the job, we need good people and it's really about fit. If it's a good fit for you and a good fit for us, it's a great career. It gives you a chance to make a difference in somebody's life. It's a, it's a true service uh, to be able to serve and do for the public what we do up here and to do it in a very humble and meaningful way. But we teach you everything. We teach you everything in the academy, in the basic academy. So you can come in here not knowing anything about public safety or um, being a 911 dispatcher, we teach you everything. You have levels of career development that you can move forward and move up um, with pay increases, educational increases, um, just learning the knowledge of bettering yourself in this career. You know, while they're in the academy, they have to decide, this is the lifestyle I want to live. I want to help people, and to help people, it's going to take long hours. It's going to take a lot of studying. It's going to take a lot of preparation. It's going to take missing some holidays. It's going to take missing some family time. You just have to come up here and commit to it 101%. Because if you come in at 90%, you're not going to be able to make it. You won't make it all the way. You have to come in at 101 and be ready to put in a lot of work. When it's such a rewarding position, then you'll never look back.